Welcome, Stitchy friends and floss tubers. This is take number three. My name is Stitching Scotty, and my name is Dottie, and this is my floss tube all about county cross stitch. And today is April the 2nd, 2022, and I would just like to welcome you, and it, whether you're a new subscriber or you've been here a while, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and the like button and come back and see me again. Okay, um, today we're going to start with questions. <clears throat> I don't have many, so <laughs> I very rarely get questions, and I was like, oh, yeah, I got a question. So anyway, Pava asked, how does the stitch count work? Like when you get a pattern, how do you know what the stitch count is? So you take your pattern out, and if it says like 120 stitches by 100 or say 90 stitches, okay, the 120 stitches is the width of the pattern. So that means that is how wide the pattern is. Then the 90 stitches would be how high it is. So the second number is the height. And I did check that with the Erica Michaels pattern and also several other patterns just to make sure I was giving you the right information. So remember, the width is first and the height is second, okay? And what I told her was sometimes, you know, I just kind of eyeball it and I, look, I pick my fabric up and I just kind of look at it and go, yeah, there's more stitches this way than that way. So it must go this way. Well, a couple of times I have made a mistake. So I need to be more careful. <laughs> and sometimes you have, you can make it work and other times you cannot. So um, most of the time I've been quite lucky. But if I run out, sometimes I'll sew like a piece of light muslin or something on the edge of, you know, regular cotton fabric on the edge of my material. So I'll have enough, you know, to frame it or whatever. So, hmm, yeah. So, Pava, I hope that helped. Then, uh, Sarah Stitches commented, or she asked, you know, was the uh, cross-stitch, hashtag cross-stitch Christmas week that Annabelle is, is doing, um, is it a week, an entire week of Christmas stitching? And yes, it is. It's usually the third week of the month. And if you watch Annabella's Floss Tube, she does say it's the third week of the month. And it does last for an entire week that you put aside your other whips or works in progress. And you just pick up your Christmas stitching so you'll have all the stuff stitched by July. And then when the new patterns come out, then you can do more. So, yay. So anyway, uh, welcome, Sarah. And uh, I hope to see all your uh, posts on Instagram. That is an Instagram group. And it's hashtag cross stitch Christmas week, except it's Xmas. It's X stitch Xmas week. And I will link that below. <clears throat> um, then I had a suggestion from someone. I haven't talked much about, you know, current events or anything because, um, you know, I feel like everybody is talking about it and, um, you know, it's, I, I try to be different, uh, in a certain extent. But anyway, um, the thing I want to talk about today is, uh, a Ukrainian designer and it's called Cute Patterns by Maria. And that will be where freebies come today. She also has an Etsy shop that you can uh, support her by buying some of her designs. And her designs are so cute. And I have three of her patterns that I chose for freebies um, that she posted. She has a Facebook group. And all you have to do is go to Facebook, hit the search button, and um, or hit the little search magnifying glass and put Cute Patterns by Maria. If you don't have a Facebook group, I'm so sorry. Mm. Uh, you'll just have to go to her Etsy shop and buy something because it's cute. Okay, the first one is called Be Well and Smile. And is that not too precious? And it's so springy. But I just love that little bunny rabbit. And all the colors make you think of spring and Easter. Be Well and Smile. So that's the first one. And it's a color chart. And it's 50 by 50, just about. Okay, and then the next one is, <clears throat> um, if you just give me a second, technical difficulties, you know. <laughs> okay, the next one is 
called Spring is Coming. And that's what really caught my eye. Is that not the most colorful, cute little bird? Just so cute. And I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. So this one, Spring is Coming. You just go on her Facebook group and you just scroll down till you see the picture, Spring is Coming. And it tells you what to, it's got a link for you to click on to get the PB, PDF chart. PDF. Oh, listen. And then the last one, you can get a head start on autumn stitching. And this is called Autumn Morning. Um, and it's got the little um, tea kettle with the flowers and leaves in it and the little teacup with a leaf on it with probably a cup of tea in it. And those are so, so, so cute. Three really good patterns on her Facebook group. So I just want to, you know, encourage y'all to please, please go to her Etsy shop. And based on that, I thought I would go to her Etsy shop for some of you. <clears throat> it says um, that she appeals to all her friends and customers because I know you can help us. If you support Ukraine, go out with flags to Ukrainian embassies or consulates, just to places where your community used to gather and so show your solidarity with our Ukraine and to write letters and uh, because they want to be independent. Okay, one of the things she has that's very, very cute, this one is called Be Peaceful, and it's got the cutest little bee. Is that not too cute? All right, and then, um, oops, darn it. Okay, the next one is <clears throat> Cross Stitch uh, Bunny. Look at him, or her, I guess I should say. She's got very long eyelashes, but Cross Stitch Bunny. Now, she's got way more patterns than what I'm going to show but I just thought I would show a few of the ones that you could purchase from Etsy. Um, for those of you that like, um, oh, here we go, beach um, stitching. She's got a toucan, a sandcastle, a sailboat, a lighthouse, and a beach scene, and it's called Summer Adventure. Okay, she didn't design these. Never mind. I'm not going there. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. This would make a cute, cute Christmas ornament. It's a um, little tiger, Christmas tiger. Isn't he cute with a little Christmas tree? Now, she has other patterns on there also that she sells in her shop. Um, <clears throat> then we have uh, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year with the two little reindeer. Since we're talking about stitching a week of Christmas with Annabella's cross-stitch Facebook group. Those are just too cute. Got two Rudolphs and a Robin. And then we have... <clears throat> Excuse me again. We have the cardinals for those ladies of you that like cardinals and birds. Isn't that beautiful? And they look so pretty on the blue with the snowflakes. And I'll show one more. Um, and somebody was talking about Mrs. Claus, how you don't see Mrs. Claus very much. And... This says, um, this is a funny pattern for Christmas ornament or Christmas gift. And there's Mrs. Claus. Isn't she cute? Now, she's got a good bit of outline backstitch in it, you know, to outline and bring her out. But she is just so cute. But anyway, her parent, her patterns are quite inexpensive. And uh, she's, a, she's a Ukrainian designer, so I thought I would feature her today. And thank you so much. Debbie, I appreciate it, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show, I have an FFO. Can you believe it, people? Um, 
Last week, though, I said that um, I had finished the tomato pin cushion for my monthly Orny Sal or 12 in 22 ornament stitch along. Okay, and all I had to do was cut it out and put the magnet on. Well, I can't find the magnet, but I did get it cut out and I got the felt on the back. And the felt, excuse me, got some stuff. And the felt on the back. Now, what I really liked about this felt, what, which I got either at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, I cannot remember. And anyway, this is Presto felt, okay? And um, the felt has sticky on the back of it. Now, I've heard some people like this and some people don't, but what I liked about it was I just cut my little square out. I traced with an ink pen on the back and it just made like an indention that I could cut out my wonky looking shape. So this was really good because I didn't have to trace it on a piece of paper and then worry about holding the paper still, you know, or gluing it on there like with uh, the glue stick until I could get it taken off or like maybe put some spray or something on it. And this worked really well. Now we're going to see how long this sticks on here. If it doesn't, I will go back with some Eileen's glue or glue stick or something and glue it back on. But this was a Mill Hill kit. <clears throat> And it's on 14 count perforated paper, and I used all the um, DMC threads and the Mill Hill beads for this. So, there you go. And then I cut it out with scissors. And the scissors I used are some that I had that are very old. Now, these are very nice scissors, but what I liked about them is the point is very, very tiny. So you're able to get in between all the little edges really easy. But once you use them on this, they will not cut through it. Mm -mm, no. So just remember that. You want to use an old, old pair, you know, that is about gone. But um, they give very good directions of, uh, you know, how to put the treasure bead on. Because, you know, we had the treasure heart there that kind of glows and how to do the beading and things and it's it's quite easy and lots of fun and a very quick stitch and finish okay the next finish i had was not an ffo but it was finally a finish um it's called happy halloween by primrose cottage stitches and i used the call for week style works persimmon parchment and onyx and it took two skeins of each which thank goodness it told you on the back of the pattern um and this one's 82 by 68 and i did this one on oh dear forgot the name of the fabric again um yeah, and I decided not to put bows on her shoes, but I got this all done. But see, there's a lot more stitching in that than you think. But I thought the little ghost was really cute up in the top with a little headband. Just too, too cute. And the spider. And the little witch's shoes. I may change my mind and decide to put some bows on there. I don't know, but I really, really doubt it. Just too cute. And this was on... 28 count, I think. Yeah, it's on 28 count, if I'm not mistaken. Or no. It's either 28 or 32 count. Mm, yeah. See, when you tear up your, or you know, you don't tear up, but I mean, when I take apart my stitching bag, that's, that's what happens. Oh, well, but anyway, it's a finish, and hopefully it'll be a FFO soon. So that is exciting. So I'll lay that over there in the we need to finish it pile. Um, also, I have some past FFOs and finishes. Um, okay, the first one I have is also a Mill Hill kit. Um, it's a bunny pin, and is he not too cute? He's got a lot of beads on him. And you do the cross-stitching first, then you do the beading, and then, you know, you cut your little piece of felt out, and it even had the little pin back in here that you stick on here. Now, if you didn't want to make him a pin, you could make him a magnet. 
Oh, well, there I go dropping something. Okay, now for his tail, you took and you made loops of beads and everybody would say, oh, that looks really hard. You just put them on the needle. You come up in one spot, you, spot A, you put them on the needle, like seven or eight, just like the directions say. Then you go down in another spot and guess what? It makes a loop, a beaded loop, see? So this was lots of fun and I really enjoyed this. This is an oldie but a goodie. I think this was the first Mill Hill beaded thing I did. And see, it doesn't look too bad. So, all right, that's what I like about cross stitches. It usually always looks good on the front and we don't talk about that, but you know. Then, um, speaking of beads, I usually only show cross stitch, but I saw this and I thought, you know, I really need to show this. So, um, and I should have shown it during um, March because it's green. But this is my beaded uh, Russian spiral bracelet that I made at Panda's Cross Stitch and Beading. I took a class there and I enjoyed making this so much. I made three or four more. And um, it's just a spiral bracelet and you use, um, mm, I think they're Delica beads if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while, so I don't remember that either, but it was just a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed making this. This was one of the easiest things I've ever beaded, so um, I enjoyed making that, and I forgot to wear it on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, well. <clears throat> okay, and the next thing I have is by Lizzie Kate, because you know I do love me some Lizzie Kate, so I changed out my frame, and uh, this is my spring um, season and um, it's got the little cabbage button here or you can sew they've got a design where you can just stitch the cabbage but this is on 28 count um, I think it's on cafe mocha and um, I use two strands over two threads and there's a little outline stitching around the picket fence that I put in there because it didn't show up at all and I just thought the little tulips and everything was really cute. And you got a pink door and a pink chimney. And those are some big carrots. All right. So that's my spring stitch. And, of course, the frame came from um, Stitching Frame in Rock Hill, South Carolina, <clears throat> which is one of my local needlework shops. Sort of kind of local. All right. The next thing I did was a Bent Creek. And this, this was a kit, and this is on, oh dear, I want to say it's on 18 count or 20 count. No, not 20. I think it's on 18 count, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't swear to that. Goodness, look at the glare. And this is spring, <clears throat> and it uses pearl cotton for all the stitching. And um, that was... This series was probably about the first time I had cross-stitched with pearl cotton. But I had used pearl cotton, you know, for like needlepoint and different things. So, um, but I used one strand and it's all stitched. And there's some long stitches in the middle of the flowers. And that's it. And this frame is a stitching frame. No, this is a Mill Hill frame. So I really, really like this one. <clears throat> So, there's that one. Then, back to Lizzie Kate. This is another one I finished last year. You may have recognized this, or it could have been year before last, but I think it was last year. And this is called Busy Hands Make Happy Hearts. And this was one of those Flora, mm, Flora something kits that she had. And it had the little charm, and it had the fabric, and um, I had to furnish the floss. So I did that, and then when I finished it, I put it on a foam core, put some rickrack around it, and put it on a darker green piece of green, and then I did the magnet glue thing, the magnet washer thing, and I stuck it on this little board. And then if I have anything else about this size, I can just kind of change it out. But I really enjoyed doing this, and it was a lot of fun. So that's my uh, past finishes, and I'm sure that you can get the Lizzie Kate pattern still at uh, 123 Stitch or even some of your local 
uh, needle work shops. And the Mill Hill kits, you could probably get there also. I know the tomato one is available. I'm pretty sure the bunny one is available. Um, and the Bent Creek one, I think it's still avail available also. And um, But it's, it's a really, really pretty uh, series. Okay, um, the next thing we have is um, Whip Go. Okay, she called out, Jessie Marie does stuff, called out the new numbers, and the numbers were 7 and 10. And Whip Go is the bingo game that helps me finish my whips or works in progress. And you have 25 blocks to fill. It doesn't have to be 25 projects. So she called out number, I oh, can't see, 7, <laughs> which is a vowel stuff ornament, and it said one ornament finish. And then she also called out number 10. And is it not funny that last month she did, uh, she called out the two numbers that had my square dance. So now, and I, she had called out one that had June on there. And um, the other one had August. And so I changed this one to August. And I changed the other one to June when I shouldn't have even changed it. But anyway, this was number 10. So it's got to have a finish. Now, I've not even started the August. So, um, I'll show you what I've got here. And you remember seeing this just last week. Um, this is by Heart and Hand. And there's by January, February, March, April, May, June, and now July. And then there's all this empty space that I need to do the rest of the months of the year. And then I've got the little free chart that I downloaded on her website so, I need to get busy on this. Um, <clears throat> and this is on 32 count vintage country mocha. And the pattern I will be doing this month will have bees. See, like that. So, that's so, so cute. And next month will be chickens. Or next time after this month. <clears throat> but I don't have that on my whip go as of yet. Unless something... Drastic goes. I'm going to try so hard not to change any of my Whip Go projects this year. Okay, and then the next thing on Whip Go was the Val Stuff Ornament. And I got the Spook of the Month, November. Is he not too cute? I'm really not much of a cat person. I'm a dog person. But this kitty cat, he just looks too spooky. And these, I'm using the Wicks Dye Works on some colors. And not on others. Oh, shoot. And, um, hang on. This is on perforated paper. And let me hold something up behind it. Okay, there we go. This is on perforated paper, and that's what I've got done so far. So, I need to get the black and white check at the bottom, and I need the green around, and his googly eyes, and the word Halloween. And then he'll be done. So, don't like a lot on this one, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> I had done some and forgot to take a picture. So I had to take a picture from here because, yeah, I forgot. But anyway, I need to finish so it really doesn't matter. It's not like I'm counting stitches. So I have a whole bunch of the Spook of the Month ornaments, so I can't wait to get those done and do me maybe a Halloween tree or something. I don't know. But anyway, um... Hopefully, we'll get both of those done. Then, we'll talk about my whips or my works in progress. Okay, the first thing um, that we'll talk about is with thy needle and thread, the Brenda Gervais Candy Cane Wishes. And the minute I saw this one, I was like, oh, that is just too cute. Well, the only bad thing was is I used to just stitch on 28 and 32 count, and 32 count was kind of pushing it. But I saw this, and it was so cute. And guess what? You have to stitch on, for it to fit on this darling little box, 40 count, mm -hmm, 40, R&R &R Reproductions linen, and it was salt marsh green. And you work over two threads, and it's 55, see, across by 80, up and down. So, yeah. So, what I did was I... Uh, <clears throat> picked it up, and I thought, well, I'm going to try because I really want it to go in that box. And you know, it really wasn't that bad. So look at this. I've got 
a lot of the little snowman done. He is a long snowman. Look at that. Hmm. And I got his, um, I just did more on the snowman and, uh, you know, because last week I'd done the hat and the mittens and stuff, but I didn't get much more done. So hopefully I could get a good bit done on this. Um, there you go. So you can see it better. But uh, he's going to be so cute. Really, really cute. And I'm using one strand on 40 count. And I'm going over two threads of linen. And this is Candy Cane Wishes. And I'm using Week Style Works Call For, the Gentle Arts Shaker, and the classic, the Gentle Arts Sampler Threads, and the classic Color Works Threads. Um, <clears throat> so, and wait a minute, there's something I'm not using that they have that I couldn't find. The old gold for the Cardinal's legs uh, is going to be DMC 676. So, because I could not find it. I'm sure I could find it now, but eh, it doesn't matter. I've got it kitted up in my handy dandy cheap project bag, a Ziploc bag. <laughs> so, anyway, <clears throat> so he'll take a rest until the uh, Chris cross stitch Christmas week. Then the next thing I did uh, was Annie B's Folk Arts Time to Bloom. And I got this at Needlework Expo last year, and I thought it was so cute. But, and I got the sulky threads. But, of course, I didn't get all of them. I don't know why, but I didn't. Um, but, anyway, this is on 28 Count Serene by Picture This Plus, I think. No, no. Well, maybe. Oh, dear. Hmm. No, I don't know what it's on. Anyway, it's on something white. How's that sound? It, but it is 28 count. So there you go. So, uh, this is called It's Your Time or Time to Bloom. And it says it's your time to bloom. It's two strands over two. And you see I'm almost finished. This was a slow stitch with all those different confetti color changes. Um... Confetti stitches are just like a lone stitch. That didn't sound good. Oh, the door just came open. It's just like a lone stitch. So, um, you know, here and there. But I thought it was really cute. And now I've got to do the little uh, calico wall on the bottom. And I think that's in the center of the big red flowers. And I think that's about all I lack. So hopefully this will be a finish and it's going to be a pillow and a gift. I've decided I'm going to give this to my youngest daughter. But I loved it. Two strands over two. It's getting to the point where I need to like give away a few things. For a while I just stitched and kept it for myself. But mm, the house is getting full. So I mean I can put more. But you know you can only have so many pillows. And the chart is very easy to read. It's color. And this is in a... Um, bag that I got when I went to Leela May Stitchery and uh, with Priscilla and Chelsea. So, that was fun. <clears throat> then the last thing I stitched on this week uh, was carrot seeds. Speaking of Priscilla and Chelsea, by Stitching with the Housewives. And this is also going to be a present for my other daughter. You know, I have to be fair. I have to do everybody something. Now, I will say that the black I stitched this on was in my stash and it was something I got at the yard sale a long time ago from a friend that was unable to stitch anymore and I never want to stitch on this fabric again I like black don't get me wrong but this black mm, yeah it is very very tight woven tightly woven and it's very hard to see the stitches and so I got the green at the bottom uh, seeds done because I had been working. Oh, the painting is Winston. I guess he's been out chasing dogs. But this is two strands over two. And I'm using uh, the DMC 702 for the green instead of uh, four leaf clover because at the time I couldn't, last year, I could not find the four leaf clover. And otherwise, I'm using pretty much all of the Call 4 colors. 
and they're classic color works. And I'm probably going to put this on a little block in, uh, you know, like Priscilla Fight, just a little bit. There goes Stryker. Oh my goodness. You got to see Stryker, His Royal Highness. And the reason I want, oops, the reason I want to give it to my daughter is she made me this cute little bag with her um, cricket. Yeah, because I'm stitching Scotty. Isn't she sweet? And I know I've shown, shown the bag before, but I just wanted to show it again just because I'm so proud of it. And I have no idea what count this is, but I want to say it's like 22, something like that. Don't like it. Don't like it. No, no. Now, I, th I say 22. I'm thinking Hardanger. No, it's even smaller than that. It's probably 32. It could even be 36. But with it being black, Mm, no, I don't like it. But anyway, getting off that negative stuff. Okay, I have no haul. Hmm, imagine that. After all I had last week. But what are my plans? Well, I'm going to stitch some more on the carrot seeds. And this is Blackbird Weekend. And I had told Niecy Lynn that I was going to stitch on my Cox Crow Sal from the Blackbird Sisters book. And, um, yeah. It's at first Cox Crow, and my book is falling apart. Here we go. I never make copies of my patterns, very rarely. And, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, anyway, I'll show you what I've got on it. It's on um, Oaken, if I'm not mistaken. And this is what I've got done so far, and it's wrinkly because I'm going to work on it. And I didn't see the need to iron it. But that's what I'm going to work on the rest of this weekend. So, um, I know this is kind of a shorter video. Oh, wait. I'm also going to work on my Lady Halloween sale uh, that Stitching by the Shore is working on, Laura. And um, something kind of Eastery type, you know. And hopefully I'll get the, um, in full bloom, I'll get to work on it too. And I never did work on the Vintage Housewife, so I'd like to work on that too. See? I want to work on everything. So, um, thank you again for your sweet, sweet comments. And just to kind of see who watches till the end of the video, because I loved answering your comments. Y'all are spoiling me. Um, tell me where you live. You know, like what area of the United States or what country you live in. Because I know I have viewers from Australia. I have viewers from Scotland, Great Britain. And... Oh, I think I have somebody from Japan, but I'm not sure. But anyway, tell me where you live so I can, um, you know, keep up. And I was surprised. I had several viewers that were very, very close to me and uh, like right in my local area. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye. Happy stitching.